All right, so it's been a long while since I've gotten anything on the KIC 462852. And this would be the star that everybody says is an alien megastructure or has an alien megastructure around it. And there's a lot of interesting things going on with this. Um, Caltech has been allowed to intervene in the Kepler Observatory and ran a bunch of figures. Um, there were 1,600 total um, situations involved. I'll go into all the details in a minute. And basically, everybody says, you know, the pattern of behavior isn't like something when a comet goes in front of a star and you see partial mapping of you know, dimness or something like that. And the person we're getting this from is Ben Monet of Caltech. I don't know if he's um, some kind of professor there or some kind of, you know, worldly researched person in uh, astronomy. But basically analyzing everything he says that it was very weird because the entire stellar flux had dimmed. It was not just the star's light output. In other words, the star basically dimmed by itself and the area around the star dimmed. It wasn't just, you know, a comet passing in front of the star or, you know, an asteroid field passing in front of... The the star, you know, made it to where it dimmed. The whole stellar flux dimmed. Can't make this stuff up, folks, even if I wanted to. I really can't. Not anymore. There was a time and a place I could have made it good. So this is what I want to show you here, and I got the uh, website to Science Alert, so you know it's good. All right, so altogether there was about a 1,600 uh, days that uh, Kepler through NASA, etc., observed um, KIC 85. You guys know the number. I don't have that number in front of me, so I'm not even going to, you know, do that. Anyways. What was basically seen is that not only did the star's output occasionally dip to 20% or tw dip by 20%, the weird behavior uh, scientists first spotted last year, which is what they initially thought was very, very strange. But over the course of the observations, its entire stellar flux had dimmed, had actually dimmed. Uh, for the first thousand days Kepler was observing the star, the dimming wasn't too extreme. The star dropped in luminosity about 34% per year. That's a lot, folks. But over the next 200 days, the star dimmed more than 2% before leveling off. So, in other words, 36%. In total, the star lost about 3% of its total luminosity or luminosity, whatever you want to call it, during a four-year study or a four-year period. I'll get everything in a second. Researchers analyzed data on 193 nearby stars and 355 stars that are similar to Tabby's star, the KIC, the, the one we're talking about, um, and couldn't find anything else like it. This is an absolute anomaly, folks. And this is basically what I'm finding here. And all this was done by Ben Monet of Caltech. Uh, he was telling Maddie Stone of Gizmodo. Basically, we just weren't able to find out what was actually going on. This involves uh, Kepler Observatory and uh, Kepler spacecraft, etc. Uh, involved in KIC 8462852, otherwise known as Tabby Star. Dimming as much as incredible rate, 
that it can't solely be explained by any leading hypothesis we had. Comet swarms was my idea, didn't fit the mathematics, didn't fit the algorithms, or even effects of a warped star, didn't affect the math, nothing could really hold true because the other um, comets similar were acting completely different. And basically it brings it down to the idea that there's more evidence for an alien megastructure hypothesis, which is also internet backed, which is related to a hypothetical Dyson sphere uh, around the star, which basically would harvest the star's energy. And it looks like the data of the last study was analyzed by two other Caltech scientists. Um, and basically, the scientists got an understanding on how the star changed in brightness over the more than four years. Using the telescope was pointed directly at the, uh, the star. And basically, what they saw was that the star occasionally dipped 20% uh, in the first year. But over the next thousand days, 34% with two more percent before leveling off, which is what I told you before. So this is what it really is, folks. And I can't tell you that this isn't weird. What I wish they would do is release the data together so that we could see it. Now I know it's going to be all light particles and numbers because most of the time, you know, it isn't going to be anything more than thermal imaging and mapping the algorithms. It's not like they're going to see it like we see, you know, the sun that we see. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. I don't know what programs they're using. I don't know what their method of observation is. But as you can see, Caltech has analyzed KIC 8462852. And not just one, but three Caltech researchers conclude the entire stellar flux dimmed. Not just the star's light output, so it isn't just fitting in with the comet idea going in front of the sun. It isn't just other things, everything is pointing to an exact idea that there is either, I hate the word alien megastructure, because for all we know, it could be one of ours. Honestly. It could be, you know, some civilization related to us, unlikely of course, that, you know, went to the stars a thousand years ago, built up some structure around the the uh, actual star and is also using the energy and um, the Dyson Spear concept is actually used a lot in science fiction I believe Star Trek used it in the cube Star Wars obviously had an idea similar to the Dyson Spear using the Sun uh, through the Death Star idea and um, the one where they took the planet, harvested the planet into a base. And what I want to say is that I can't say that it isn't some kind of technological uh, structure, whether foreign, homegrown, you know, any number of other things, I don't care. But now that Caltech has analyzed this, and it isn't just, you know, Berkeley and the other places, I knew a guy from Caltech. Uh, he was one of my math mentors when I was in grade school. The guy knew his stuff inside and out. Um, brilliant, brilliant MBA. Uh, 
And so the entire stellar flux dimmed from this star over like 1,600 days of it being observed. It wasn't just the star's light in output from, uh, you know, from comets passing by and other things because when they did the research against other stars in the area, I think they said, what was it, 165 out of like 355 or something like that that they ran, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think it was 355 total they ran, and like 165 were similar to uh, this sun. Um, out of none of those, did any of them behave similar to this guy? So I'm not going to come out and say it's an alien megastructure because it could be one of ours. I mean, if civilization goes back 5,000 years, we could have had one of these things up and running 1,000 to 2,000 years ago. It doesn't have to be um, alien in nature. You know, but very much could be too. So kudos to them as long as they don't shoot the death ray at Earth, which I don't think they would because this thing's existed far beyond our observable um, time period. And if they had any ill intentions, especially toward our planet, no doubt it would have already been uh, taken out. And one of the cool things, I don't know if you guys really want to get into the idea since this is a political news stuff, but one of the ideas behind the Death Star is that originally the idea would have been to harvest a sun or something like this um, for the energy. And that's what is basically create a small star, etc. in the core of the Death Star. I don't know all the stuff that uh, Lucas went into to explain it or the whole Star Wars franchise behind it. I'm certain there's lots of engineering schematics and everything else involved. Uh, especially in the real world. But if you'd really consider that, you would also, um, by the design of CERN, you have to dump that energy at some point or another. So the idea that basically um, they would be, um, now I'm going back to the real situation, the idea that they would be harvesting a star's energy uh, that energy has to be reproduced somewhere else and it has to be distributed somewhere else. So it's a matter of time before it becomes where is that energy going and what possible way could they be using it. But if it is an alien megastructure, then that is exactly what it is. The whole civilization around one star, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but going back to the Death Star for one second, um, it is believed that if and when they would use a star or develop a star-like power, that that energy would have to be shot out into space periodically um, before the generators basically overflowed, or the capacitors, if you will, and that the blowing up of Tatooine, and I, I believe it was Tatooine, I don't know, uh, and others were basically, they were both targeted, and it was more or less, well, we got to discharge the energy anyway. Why don't we just pick a couple planets at random? And because I, I know this because of CERN. When CERN runs their uh, collider, depending on if it's the Atlas station or the other few, they basically have to discharge their energy. And the way they do that is through uh, pools built in the bottom, and that basically dispels all the energy, and that's what causes all the major earthquakes after their major scientific experiments. So the idea that uh, KIC 8462852 is possibly an alien megastructure, I'll just use the term, uh, using a star's energy, that energy has to be basically stored and it has to be discharged somewhere. 
And from what I understand, they have yet to see that the star's energy is discharged. Now, you're going to say that they have reached a point in their civilization where they can maximize the output 100% and use all energy to absolute efficiency. Great. Um, you're also going to say that by doing so, they won't have to discharge the energy because they would just reintroduce the energy um, organically back into the star and basically that is how it functions. Well, that's a nice theory. So KIC8462852 has been analyzed by Caltech. The entire stellar flux dimmed, not just the star's light output. Thank you.